Hello dear students, this is Dr. J.V. Utari, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, KIT's College of Engineering, Kolhapur. Welcome to the course, Computer Graphics, Unit 1, Introduction. Lesson 2, in this unit, we are going to learn the various types of output devices. The most dominant type of output device is cathode ray tube. The figure shows the elements or components of a cathode ray tube display device. It consists of negatively charged cathode and a positively charged anode. When a sufficient voltage is applied to the cathode, the electrons boil off and they form the cloud of electrons. This, these cloud of electrons, they are attracted towards the positively charged anode, which is made up of phosphor coating on the surface of your CRT display device. The cloud of electrons, they move towards the positively charged anode. This cloud of electrons is then converted into a narrow beam of electrons with the help of electron gun as well as the focusing lens. The electron beam is directed towards the required position on the surface of your CRT with the help of horizontal and vertical deflectors along the x axis as well as y axis. To see a steady flicker free image, the same path must be retraced or refreshed. This rate at which path is refreshed or retraced, it is called as refresh rate of the CRT display device. A color, to obtain the color images on the surface of your CRT, we use three different colored phosphor dots which are arranged in a typical pattern in the form of triangle or triads as shown in the figure. In the figure we can see three electron guns are arranged in a triangular pattern following the pattern of the phosphor dots on the surface of the CRT. In between the surface of the CRT and the electron guns, there is a perforated metal grid called as shadow mask. Resolution of the cathode ray tube is nothing but the maximum number of points that can be displayed without overlap on the CRT. The number of points per centimeter that can be plotted horizontally or vertically can also be called as resolution or the total number of points in each direction is nothing but the resolution of your CRT display device. Aspect ratio of the CRT display device is the ratio of vertical points to the horizontal points necessary to produce equal length lines in both the directions on the screen. There are two types of CRT display devices, random scan display device and raster scan display device. Let us learn random scan display device first. A random scan display device, it is also called as a line drawing display device, where a line can be directly drawn from one addressable point to the ad another addressable point as shown in the figure on the left side of your screen. An electron beam operates like a pencil to create a line image on the CRT screen. A picture is constructed out of sequence of straight line segments. Each line segment is drawn on the screen by directing the beam to move from one point on the screen to the next, where its x and y coordinates define each point. After drawing the picture, the system cycles back to the first line and design all the lines of the image 30 to 60 times per second. A CRT has the electron beam directed only to the parts of the screen where a picture is to be drawn. Random scan monitors draw a picture one line at a time and hence they are also referred to as vector display devices or stroke writing or calligraphic refresh display devices. The refresh rate of random scan display devices depends upon the number of lines to be displayed. Picture information is usually defined and stored in the form of set of line drawing commands which is stored in a memory called as display file or a display list. In order to display a picture, the system cycles through the set of commands in the display file, drawing each component line in turn. Raster scan display device is called as point plotting display device. As we can see on the screen, every picture is defined as a collection of points. So, it is a point plotting display device. 
raster scan display device consists of matrix of discrete cells each of which can be made bright as shown in the figure a at the bottom of your screen lines can only be approximated by a series of dots close to the path of the line because of the matrix representation of the cells or pixels only horizontal lines vertical lines and diagonal lines will appear as straight lines all ap other lines appear as series of stair steps this effect is called as aliasing or jaggies a raster crt is usually implemented using frame buffer frame buffer is a contiguous piece of memory which stores the picture information in binary form one memory bit is used for each pixel in the frame buffer this amount of memory is called as bit plane figure shows a single bit plane which yields a black and white color frame buffer is a digital device whereas raster crt is an analog device hence we need a digital to analog converter as can be seen in the figure a binary value from the frame buffer is loaded into the register this binary value is then converted into analog value by digital to analog converter this analog value is given as input to the electron gun to decide the intensity level of the pixel at the corresponding pixel location on the surface of your crt screen we can obtain different colors or gray levels on the surface of your crt screen by using additional bit planes as shown in figure on the left side of your screen as seen in the figure there are n number of frame buffers used n bits from n frame n number of frame buffers is loaded into the register this will allow 2 raised to n number of intensity levels at each pixel position the intensity of each pixel on the crt is controlled by corresponding pixel location in each of the n bit planes these binary values from n bit planes are loaded into the register the resulting binary number is interpreted as an intensity level between 0 to 2 raised to n minus 1 thus total 2 raised to n different intensity levels are possible for each single pixel on the surface of your crt we can increase the number of intensity levels beyond 2 raised to n by using an additional element called as lookup table upon reading the bit planes in the frame buffer the resulting number is used as an index into the lookup table as shown in the figure so in the example there are n number of frame buffers and a lookup table which is w bit wide usually w should be greater than n so in the example n is equal to 3 whereas w is equal to 4 the binary the, the three binary values which are read from the frame buffer are loaded into the register these three binary values are then converted into digital value 2 which is used as an index into the lookup table each entry in the lookup table is a w bit wide w is greater than n so 2 raised to w intensities are available through the use of lookup table in order to obtain different colors we use simple color frame buffer which is implemented using three three bit planes one for each primary color red green and blue each bit plane drives an individual color gun as shown in the figure corresponding to the three primary colors these three colors are then combined at the crt to yield eight colors so three primary colors will yield 2 raised to 8 uh, 2 raised to 3 that is eight number of colors for a single pixel location to obtain different levels of intensities of each of the three primary colors we can use additional bit planes as shown in figure a 24 bit plane color frame buffer is shown on the screen for each of the three primary colors eight frame buffers are used the eight corresponding values from the frame buffer they decide the intensity of each of the three primary colors figure shows a 24 bit plane color frame buffer with 10 bit wide lookup table in the example n is equal to 8 for each of the three primary colors and w is equal to 10 for each of the three primary colors thus instead of 2 raised to 24 2 raised to 
30 number of intensity levels are available for each of the single pixel on the surface of your CRT using a WBIT wide lookup table.